Welcome back to the channel Baking for Business. And today's topic, we're going to talk about tips to avoid the caker burnout. When you're starting the cake business, as we know, you're everything and everything, you're one man show. So as it progresses, when uh, with time, you tend to get overwhelmed because the business has like expanded in a way. Now we're going to talk about how to avoid the burnout. Let's dig into the video. Welcome back to my channel, Baking for Business. I'm Jojo Lydia, director and cake artist, Little Hands Bakehouse, a channel where we talk about cake business entrepreneurship, we share tips and hacks, we have story time, and we answer to the many questions that we receive them in our DM. If this is for you, please subscribe to the channel for more of our videos, and let's ride on to the topic today. So, when you're starting the cake business, you're always alone because you, in any case, you started it alone. So this is the vision that one person has. When we are beginning, we beg for family and friends. This is a common phrase because anyway, those are the only person you can beg for because they believe in you, they trust you, they are readily available even to test your cakes. So as the business expands in terms of uh, your cakes being outside there and you've done your marketing well, you tend to have more and more cakes coming your way. And that's when you realize you can't do everything on your own. And you need to set boundaries that will put your sanity in check. When you're talking about the boundaries here, put the work timings. The only problem that we have as home bakers is only that the client feels we are always readily available at any time. There's no respect when it comes to timings. The clients will want to talk to you at 8 in the night, at 10 in the night, at 11 in the night, simply because you're a home baker. The, and that same client will not make a call to a cake house in town even at 6.30 because they know they're already closed. But simply because you're a home baker, they are free to call you at any time. So you put the boundaries. Now, in relation to that, the boundaries that we have at Little Hands Bake House. We only work from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening. Any other business past 6, when it comes to caking, we don't uh, um, relate to them at that very time. We don't receive calls past 6 o'clock. We don't respond to the messages past 6 o'clock. And to have structures that will help you in this, you might want to move from a normal uh, WhatsApp to a business WhatsApp. The business WhatsApp gives you a lot of uh, features that you can able to write a message to the client that uh, it's an auto message. When the client contacts you outside the business hours, it just bounces back to them that I'm sorry at the moment we are not working. It's a closing time and we work from this and this time. So this way the clients tend to understand your work timings. They tend to respect your work and they tend to respect your time when it comes to be a home baker. So work with time. Put your time out there. Let the client know. Communicate to them what is the time that you're comfortable to work and those are the boundaries that you're talking about. This way, a client will not call you at 11 and when they tried to send you a message, it, said, it uh, gave them an auto reply that you're no longer available at that time. So for us, any messages that we receive from 6 p.m. in the evening, we just respond to them the following day at 8 in the business behind baking, when it comes to little hands, I still not figured out how a cake can be an emergency. So there's no way you're going to remember a cake at eight in the night and you want a cake the following day. Now, a little bit of story time. I remember there was a time I got very, like, a call, one missed call, one, two, three, four, five, and you're like, what kind of emergency is this? So being at night, you don't make the calls. Now a client sent you a message. It was around 9.30 in the evening, in the night. Like, I would like a cake. I would like to have a cake tomorrow at school for my son at 8 o'clock delivery. What does this client tell you in short? 
It means the client wants you to get out of your bed. You bake the cake for them. Don't sleep. Wait for the cake to bake. Let the cake rest for you to decorate the cake and come. In short, the client is telling you don't sleep just because of my cake. That is the time that we really, it's like a disrespect. We don't work that way. So there's no emergency that you remember the cake is for tomorrow and you're coming for a cake now. Those are the boundaries that you put. If you want to wake up off your bed at that time and bake, and if it's working for you, then good for you. It's okay. There's no right or wrong for this. But you're talking about how to relieve that burnout. So for us, the boundaries we've put, if you want to make an order with us at Little Hands Bake House, you give us a minimum of three to five days. This way you can always plan yourself. You won't leave your bed, just come to start decorating the cake and baking the cake at night. Okay, see what works for you. See the boundaries that you can put, but more, most in it all, it boils down to the time and the time when you're working and the time when the client can talk to you. Tip number two, how to avoid the burnout. It's learn to say no. When you're starting as home bakers, we have that fear and we have that urge that I'll take any cake that is coming for obvious reasons. We want to make the business. We want to have this money that is coming our way. We don't want to lose this client simply because you're starting. And when you're saying learn to say no, these are the things that you learn to say. Are you okay to take emergency orders? Are you okay to take last minute orders? So learn to say no for so many things. First, for us, we don't take emergency orders. We don't take last minute orders. I'm sorry. And when you communicate to your client, this is your language. This is the language that little hands communicate and they tend to respect that. So if you're still as a home baker and you want to get out of that because you're, you want to relieve the, the burnout here. Let's say you've gone to the bed and you, you want to rest because you're tired out of the day. Then a last minute, like my client who wants to do the cake in the night, will you have a rest? Definitely no. So those are th things like burnout. You want to rest, but the client is telling you, I need a cake at this, at this time. It means there's no rest for you and burnout and burnout will just get you. And you know the problem with the burnout, it just couple is up. It comes little by little, little, just like a disease. You won't have a burnout in one day. It just like gets accumulative. You see, I remember a bit of story time. Like we say, we always share story time here. We were discussing with the baker here in Akuru. The baker called me, Jojo, I need you to help me with something. Like, okay, shoot, what is it? I have a client and she needs orders of lots of cookies. But as it is, it was like, let's say like maybe 500 cookies. As it is, I can barely do maybe 300. I want you to do 200 for me. I told her, cookies is not my forte. I'm not specialized in cookies. She was ready even to give me the recipes so that we can produce something which is the same in order to help the client so that she can satisfy the client. So the one question I asked her, when did you get that order? Like she just told me today in the evening and she needs tomorrow. For me, it wasn't making sense. How would you take an order in the evening? You want to... You're planning the way you're not going to sleep in the night so that you satisfy the client for tomorrow business. For a client to know there's a function that needs 500 cookies. Was she not aware even to plan for it? So like that's, it's, that's a phrase here. Lack of planning on your side cannot cause an emergency on my side. This is pure business now. And my body is here. If it's not fit, there's no way that I'll be there tomorrow to continue running my business. So I was talking to this client. Why do you have this baker? Why do you have to take emergency orders? What is the urge? So she told me, this client has been with me for five years. I don't want to disappoint her. And I receive many clients like those ones. My clients are just emergency. My clients are just emergency. They'll tell me I need a cake tomorrow and I'll bake for them. So I was, I was asking her, why do you have to bake for the emergency? Her question was, I don't want to let my client down. But in reality, when I was talking to her, I told her, you, you attract many uh, emergency clients because you've shown them that you can do those cakes on emergencies. So she was telling me, now what will happen if I don't take the orders with them? Nothing will happen. They won't go. Your client will not leave you. Even if there's a clientele, you've, you've uh, created a relationship for six months. 
even if you don't beg for them because it's an emergency now, they won't go. This is your client. Don't be scared that they are going to leave you because you didn't beg for them an emergency cake. You see? So just create that. Let your client understand that you can't do that. But if you can do and you're okay to, to deal with the burnout, good for you. But you are attracting those clients because you've told them that it's always, when I come as emergency, you'll always beg for them. You come today, I forgot my son's birthday, you'll beg for them. I told her, just try it. Try to tell your clients you can't do the cake. See what happens. They will not go because that is the fear. Clients never go. Creating a relationship with a client is not something that can be broken within one minute because it wasn't created in one minute. So uh, we left the conversation. I could not do the cookies for her. As it is, I had a workload that which I could not handle any other thing. So she went maybe not satisfied, like feeling why, why is Jojo telling me like this? Then after a couple of months, we touched base again. She called me for something else. and like, let me tell you one thing. The moment you told me my clients could not go and I should not be taking emergency orders, you can't believe how my life has been. I, my clients came. I need an emergency cake tomorrow. I told them. I've been telling them I cannot tomorrow, maybe day after. I cannot because I'm busy. So this one, in the head of the client, they also know I missed the slot the other time. I don't want to miss the slot because I don't want to do trial and error with other bakers. I'd rather stick to my baker, but in this time, I've learned that I need to give them ample time for planning. She's the best and happy baker now. She can sleep through the night. The fear that I'm going to lose my client, the fear that the client is going to feel bad, it will always be there, but they, don't, they won't go. And you also make them understand. It's us to educate our clients on what we want them to take from us. If you want to let them know that you can make emergency order, I need a cake in the morning, in the afternoon it's there, good for you if it's working for you. But here we are talking about tips to do to avoid the burnout. Learn to say no. We're going to the third tip, outsourcing. I know when you're all starting, it's always very good to, to know whatever is happening into the business. It's good to know how to bake. It's good to know how to decorate so that anytime you bring a staff and it happens they don't come or anything, your job will not stop because you touch bases with everything. You know how to do practically everything that is happening in the bakehouse. Now, it reaches a point you've grown so big that you can't even handle more orders and everything. Now, when it comes to outsourcing, we have, we are all uh, gifted differently. Even in our industry in the baking, we've seen this baker, you know she's good in this. You've seen this baker, you know her flowers are good. You've seen this baker, you know she can do macaron. Why should you struggle to do all these things? So you need to relieve the burnout. Just do, just outsource what is it that you cannot do comfortably. Try get a baker who can do that that you need. We've seen we have very many lovely bakers coming uh, up with um, the macarons. If you know you're not good in macarons, because they always take time to make them and they're just disappointers that you can ever know, just order the macarons to them. It will relieve you the time of stress and also doing all that. Like for us, we are so happy and we are very glad to the bakers that trust us with their wedding cake flowers. Keep those business coming. I'm so happy and I'll always be glad to help you create that cake. I give you the relief of just decorating your cake. Let me beautify your cake with our flowers. We'll always be very good and very on time. We always ship the, the flowers all over. We've taken to Mombasa, we've taken to Kitale, we do Kakamega, we do Kisi, Nairobi, all over. We've transported, even to Mumias, Bungoma, all over. We've transported our wedding flower for the bakers. So if you can outsource, why should you struggle? Yes, just find that thing that you can outsource and be at peace. We have other, when it comes to the paperwork for the bakers to help you run in terms of the receipt books and all that. You can outsource a bookkeeper. You don't have to do everything. Just uh, present to them all that they need. Let them do their job. You see? In this way, you're able to relieve some of the stress when it comes to 
non-related baking. You can stick with the baking. You can stick with the decorating and just let somebody else come in between just to help you on some things that can relieve you. When it comes to photo editing, you know we need those nice photos in our in our pages for our portfolio. If you cannot edit those photos, just send the photos to a good editor. Let them do a good job for you and bring the cakes back to you with your logos and everything and your work is just to submit them to your page. Yeah, when it comes to decoration, there's this uh, a guy in Nairobi. What, what is his name? Mm -hmm. Can I remember? He just dresses the cakes. For you, just cover your cakes in fondant. Bring me to decorate the outside for you. This is called outsourcing. If he's so good in that and he doesn't have any problem when it comes to give his expertise to your cake, why not? It reduces you the stress and you go home both happy. He's gotten his job and you're doing your job and that's it. You just, we are focusing on how you can reduce your time and how you can have more rest. Another tip number four, how to reduce your burnout. This is to streamline your work. Streamline your work. When you're starting, a client can come in all forms. I want this cake, this tear to be pink. Here you put this uh, teddy bear, this teddy bear to be blue hand, the other hand to be pink, the other feet to be green. We had all that time to customize everything that the client wants. Simply because we didn't have a lot of cakes to do. But now you've grown to the point that you, ha you are, even in a week, you're talking about 40 clients. You can't satisfy 40 clients when it comes to personal needs to the minute details. Now, when you're talking about to streamline your work, see what is it that you're strong at? What is your strongest point when it comes to uh, the decorating of the cake? If you're good in soft icing, just go that way. If you're good in fondant, we have bakers who are just good in fondant. And those are the clients that are attracted to their part. You see, we have other bakers, on the other hand, who are so good when it comes to soft icing. And they just shine in soft icing. You don't have to do everything. Just streamline your work. See where your strength is. We have other bakers. Uh, they're only working when it comes to giving you sugar flowers. You want sugar flowers? You know where to go. Like now, Amanda is coming up. She's doing the, the sugar stilettos. Okay, so for me to start thinking of doing sugar stilettos for little hands because how long will it even take me to do one shoe? But here, I want just to streamline my work when it comes to some things that I'm good at doing. So if she's do good in doing that, we have someone good in doing the macarons and you're good in doing the buttercream. Just focus on that area and those are the clients that you're going to attract. When you want to, to serve everybody, you end up not serving everyone. You see, the client gets identified to someone in regards to what you're giving them out. So if you're strong in buttercream, keep to that. Streamline your work. I have bakers we've interacted. When it comes to their baking, they don't do the 0.5 kind of cakes. They don't do 1.5. They don't do 2.5. They don't do 3.5. It's not in their vocabulary. It's either you're taking a 1 kg cake, a 2 kg cake, and 3 kg cake. And that's what the client knows. So see what you streamline, streamline in your business that makes your work easy because you can't go to the minute detail of satisfying and personalizing each and every cake simply because you're growing. So again, another example, I have another baker who doesn't do fondant work for a cake that is less than two kilos. If you want a fondant cake from our bakery, it has to be two kilo cake. If you want 1.5, we are doing soft icing. So you just train your clients through your voice. Just communicate to them and they adhere to that. If you want one kilo cake, yes, I'll give you. And I also have another baker. Um, can I say another baker of what or what we do at Little Hands? The one kg cake will be equivalent to two kg cake if you want it in fondant because the work is equivalent to the same. So it's up to you to take the one kg cake with the price of two or in real, in real sense, you just take the two. So you just, you 
streamline your work. The client will come and understand and they will work with you because that's how it is. We have rules and regulations everywhere in school, in churches, and we follow. Why can't they even follow at the bakehouse? Simply because we don't put them out for them. Another tip uh, to relieve your, bar your burnout, tip number five, that is rest. Simply because we only get money when we bake. You just tend to think I have to take all the cakes. You don't want to say no to any order. But your body is here. If it means it's not in good position, you can't even do that cake. You can't even satisfy those clients that you, you're keeping them at heart. So we're talking about the rest. Uh, take one day and see which, which day it is that you can rest. For us at Little Hands Big House, our resting day is on Monday. And we totally rest. We don't do any paperwork. We don't do any uh, responses to the messages. We just want to rest out of the out of the bakery and out of the oven. When you come back to work on Tuesday, you are super rejuvenated and everyone is ready to face the week and to create all those memories in the cakes that are coming from Tuesday, Wednesday, all through the, uh, the weekend until on Sunday. So if you learned anything here about how to avoid the burnout, Please uh, give us a comment below. Let us know what is it that you've learned. And also, if you have other ways that you know burnout is reduced, please feel free to share with us. And for more of this, please feel free to ask any of your cake-related questions on the comment below. And I will try to answer them for you to the best of my knowledge. Please subscribe to the channel and see you on the next video. Bye.